from Abuja. Hello, thank you for being a part of our show. We appreciate you. I'm Magnus Paco, and this is Magnus Paco GVA. As you know, it's all about how we can raise the level of living. That's what this is all about. In view today, key issues and the real McCoys of the 2019 presidential elections. A continuation of our discussion from last time. Once again, what are the key issues before the Nigerian electorate and who are the real gladiators to expect in the arena when the gong sounds? People want to know. And so we have with us Dr. Mutiola Olashupo. Dr. Olashupo teaches politics and international relations at the University of Abuja. But before this, in our hidden economics, why gorgeous girls avoid political campaign rallies? Now up next in our quick view, we rank the most terrorized nations. That's coming right up. According to the Oxford Dictionary, terrorism is the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. Activities of terrorism inevitably affect the economy, and according to reports accompanying the Global Terrorism Index (GTI), it cost the global economy about 84 billion U.S. dollars in 2016 alone. Therefore, any real McCoy for the 2019 Nigerian presidential election would need to consider how to face terrorism in Nigeria, across Africa, and throughout the world at large. The Global Terrorism Index is an annual publication by the Institute for Economics and Peace, IEP, based in Sydney, Australia. The publication ranks countries by terror attacks and their impacts. In this connection, which of the following advanced economies is the most terrorized in the world? France, Israel, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Which of the following African countries is ranked among the top four most terrorized countries in the world? Egypt, Libya, Nigeria, and Somalia. Stay with us for our answers coming up shortly. Still in view, Dr. Mutiola Olashupo on the key issues and the real McCoys for the 2019 Nigerian presidential elections. Now up next in our hidden economics, why gorgeous girls avoid political campaign rallies. Nobody ugly. Nobody Ugly by the inimitable P-Square, one of the greatest Nigerian brother musical duos ever. So why do gorgeous girls avoid campaign rallies? As Melissa De La Cruz of Cora has said, some women place their looks far above the importance of anything else, and they love the attention. 
According to Melissa, beautiful women seem to be expected to appear a certain way. But there's more to being beautiful. Beauty also goes deep. Some people who have beautiful exteriors can begin to look ugly after you get to know them. While someone with a somewhat average face can become the most beautiful person you ever knew. But here, we are not talking about being beautiful, but instead about being gorgeous. Gorgeous typically only relates to the outer appearance of an individual, whereas the word beautiful involves the outer as well as the inner appearance of an individual. Gorgeous is about being attractive, wonderful, and delightful to look at. It does not go deep. As we have said, it deals only with outer physical attributes. Therefore, it is understandable when to be gorgeous, a woman will spend a great amount of time, mostly on her makeup, usually including red lipstick, to have the look. And then add a pair of high heel shoes to boot. This is it, folks. High heel shoes and campaign rallies don't go together. Women typically would take their high heel shoes to their office, but switch to more comfortable shoes often hidden under their desk. If guests come, the high heel shoes come out. If the lady goes out for a brief office type appearance, the high heels also come out. But to go on a campaign rally and march all over the place, the high heels won't come out. And so the lady also would not go there. So guys, if you're looking for something gorgeous, don't go to the political campaign rallies. The opportunity cost is too high. Our hidden economics for you. Before we start our discussion, here are our quick view answers. France is the advanced economy that ranks as the most terrorized in the world. Nigeria is the African country ranked among the top four most terrorized nations in the world. For comments, adverts, and sponsorship, please see our information displayed on the screen. And so today, we continue with our discussion from last time on the key issues and the real McCoys for the 2019 Nigerian presidential elections. Today, Dr. Olashipo will tell us who he considers to be the top three gladiators for the Nigerian presidency in 2019. For now, he believes one of these gentlemen is very likely to be president in 2019. He will explain why. Don't miss it. Stay with us in the continuation of our discussion with Dr. Muchiola Olashipo. It is coming right up. When you look at all these um, candidates, uh, having examined them critically, mm. uh, and if I want to fill the post of Nigerians, uh, I can select three major candidates that people are seen as a uh, remark mm. The candidates that have uh, what it takes, mm. that they are very presidential in nature. Mm. I can actually pick three of them. Okay. I may be wrong, and that's my opinion. We want to see. We want to hear them. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let me start from yes. the list. Yes. Uh, uh, Only three? Yes, I'm selecting three. 
My goodness. Yes, okay. I'm selecting three. You, you think one of these three will be president? Should yes. We, should we write this down? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Okay. It's just a mere analysis. Okay. And um, I'm going to give you the indices okay. of uh, what can make them to be. Okay. Although uh, there is there is there is some um, divergent opinions on okay. that. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't rule out such um, different opinion. Okay. Uh, the first the, the the least the, the, the first person I'm going to mention yes. is Atiku Abubakar. Okay. Atiku Abubakar is someone that is being acknowledged as a um, uh, serial contestant when it comes to issue of presidential race, you know, as former custom officers who had actually made a lot of uh, political uh, 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 influence okay. over the years as a result of his um, political sagacity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he contested in 1992, mm -hmm. uh, contested in 2007, mm -hmm and 2011, mm -hmm. so even 2015. So you could see that um, he's someone that is well experienced when it's come to presidential race. Okay. And um, if you look at what he did while he was the vice president of Nigeria, the yeah, second so vice he, president so of Nigeria. So he has experience also he has as, the experience. As, as vice president. Yes, as vice president. Yes. So he's presidential in nature. Yes. So he's one of the people that uh, we should look up to mm -hmm. when it's come to Rima calls and yes. uh, who are those that are, are very presidential. Absolutely. Then I want to mention uh, Musa Rabi Ukwakwansu, mm. the former governor of uh, Kano State, mm. uh, being a very astute politician, uh, someone that, uh, in fact, he's been acknowledged as the most popular northern politician apart from President Mamadou Buhari. Mm. Uh, no one can rule out the acceptability of Kwakwansu mm. in the entire north. Mm. And that actually placed him on a very high pedigree mm. as a real presidential candidate mm. that people should look up to. And uh, even though he has not declared, mm. but if you look at the kind of political weight he garnered in the last um, primary of uh, up, uh, APC, yeah. you realize that uh, he came second, second to yes, Buhari. Yeah. So for that, he still maintained that political structure and he's a very strong presidential candidate that people should look up to. So it's, I, I, I place him as a, the second uh, okay. person. Then the third one is uh, Muhammad Bari himself, okay. the incumbent president. Okay, president. In spite of the dismal performance of uh, APC led administration under his watch, uh, people still love him. Mm -hmm. He's still being acknowledged as the man of integrity, when transparency. You say people like which people? The I'm talking country? about the Northerners in particular, okay. who has the highest political values. Okay. You know, anybody who wants to win the election must definitely win the North. Okay. If you don't win the North, then you don't win the election in Nigeria. That's the fact. So he has that political is it values. The North that they, is it the group they call the Say Baba group, or is, the, is they even including what? the elites? I'm actually, I'm actually referring to the masses, yes. the Northern masses. Yes. And the masses actually take the vast space of population yes. in any society yes because the elite are always few yeah. even though as few as they are the exact influence on yes. every yes. Yes. policy issues are so they, are they in spite elite, of are that the elite still bringing the masses or the masses come on their own now this time around uh you see there's what they call transitory nature from masses to elite okay and um, elite is doing everything possible to protect and maintain the status quo mm. but Nevertheless, whenever there's an opportunity to transform mm. a particular group of uh, masses into their fold, they do that without wasting time, mm. due to the fact that they are well organized. While masses are very atomized, they are highly disorganized. Mm. So that's why they could actually be captured. Mm. So we're not talking about that now, because if you have to talk about the early theory, mm. I'll start giving you the Mosca, Pareto, Guatano, even Miliband views about the elitism. Okay. So let's not go. Let's not go there yeah, now. Let's not go there <laughs> now. So that we we'll save ourselves a lot yes. of time. So as I was saying, in spite of the fact that um, Buhari's administration is not performing to the expectation of Nigerians, but people are still very hopeful mm -hmm. that um, a lot still needs to be done. That he might do it. But maybe because he was sick. Exactly. So you know, he spent might, most, of, him, uh, yeah, most of his time in hospital in yeah. the last two, three years. Yes. So, but so people, uh, now might, that people might consider that. And yes, I think. Perhaps now he's giving, getting are, healthier. The Nigerians are giving him that um, yeah. okay. benefit of doubt. Okay. That uh, if Bwari. When you look at the somebody like. Uh, 
uh, Rabbi Musa Kwankoso, being that he's also from that yes, area, yes. Kano, and he has his Kwankosia uh, movement. A lot yes. of people following him because supposedly he had also done something. How, how do you see a contest since you are looking at President Bori and Kwankoso in this light? In the, in the I've been expecting Kano this question to the, come uh, up yeah. that uh, both Bori and uh, Kwankoso yes. they are in the same political party, yes. and uh, you could see that uh, in the last few months. There have been these uh, opinions, even within the ruling party, APC, yeah. Yeah. that uh, Buhari should take the will of uh, Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. of uh, South Africa, okay. who came and did one term and um, allowed the system to go yes. without necessarily participating actively. Mm -hmm. So by then he became an elder statesman and started contributing his own quota yes. towards the development of South Africa in form of guidance. Mm -hmm. You know, people are advising mm -hmm. the current uh, president, President Mohamed Buhari, mm -hmm. to follow that uh, full step by not contesting for 2019. So, so, well, well, maybe, maybe he and so Abiyo Kwanko so are talking already. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yeah. because I've never been in their camps. I yeah. don't know what is actually happening there. I'm mm -hmm. just talking like a political commentator. Yes. So, if that happens, mm -hmm. then the only candidate that we can look up to mm -hmm. is. Muhammadu Musa Rabi Kwakonsu okay. because of his pedigree in yeah. politics. Tell me your number one issue for 2019. That, for, to, to, that would be a, a determining issue for who will be president of Nigeria in 2019. Is there one particular issue? Actually, is, is it the Hertzman issue? Actually, it's, is, it, is it restructuring? Is it a uh, fuel issue? Or, or is it unemployment? Is it inflation? It's actually is very it difficult. Rate? But I will look at it from. Uh, Various perspective. Yeah. I wouldn't say one issue. Okay. I will say there are two issues okay. that will definitely determine um, 2019 general election, yes. which is going to be very prominent yeah. in the manifestos of all the major political parties in Nigeria. Yeah. The first one is digital of uh, security. We have not gotten it right okay. when it's come to the security. And there's no way the nation can attain sustainable development without adequate security. Okay. Our security is still threatened yeah. by Fulani, Esmen attack, kidnapping, okay. armed robbery, yeah. and all these issues of uh, avalanche of a uh, crisis yeah. in our society. Yeah. Something needs to be done okay. in that. Then the other area is economy. Okay. The issue of restructuring came up simply because our economy is in shambles. Yeah. Our economy is, 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 a, is, is, is a quagmire. Mm. So if we get it right in those two aspects... But when you say economy, what is the defining element in that? The defining economy yeah. is... But what are we looking at? Is, when, we is, say when we said economy yeah. should be restructured, economy should be revamped, we are talking about ability to ensure that Nigerians are being saved from hunger, okay. food security. Okay. Nigeria, wake up in the morning, go to the filling stations, get the fuel at the reasonable price okay. and Nigeria go about their normal business and the they have foreign, jobs. yes, the, 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 the issue of uh, job creations. Yes. If employment is being created, mm. even though government cannot create all the employment opportunity that we need. Mm. And that's why government need to collaborate mm. with private uh, sectors yeah. to ensure that a lucrative jobs have been created in yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. So by the time you look at all this, mm. you realize that the uh, Nigerian economy will be back into track. The issue of uh, men, as, as you said, uh, on, on the issue of uh, security, mm. I still want the government, because that's the moment, that's the issue of the moment now, the Fulani men attack. Mm. I want to advise the government that the only way in which we can stop this demonic attack, mm. because it's very disheartening to hear that yeah. hundreds of people have been killed in the midnight, yeah. you know, why can't we take Botswana policy framework? Botswana today... We will have to discuss that in another show. I'll invite you back. I okay. promise you. you I, are, I want to tell you, Doctor, you are wonderful. You are fantastic, and I really appreciate you. Thank you so Let's much. Let's do this again. Pleasure. All right. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Great job. All right, sir. So... Former President Chief Dr. Olusegun Obasanjo has spoken. Folks, let me tell this story. In the 1970s and 1980s, 
There was a famous commercial by the American stock brokerage company, E.F. Hutton. E.F. Hutton was founded in 1904 by Edward Francis Hutton and his brother, Franklin Laws Hutton. Later, the company was led by well-known Wall Street trader, Gerald M. Loeb. Under their leadership, E.F. Hutton became one of the most respected financial firms in the United States. Their very famous and colorful commercial for many years was based on the phrase, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. In the commercial, a professional is seen remarking that his broker was E.F. Hutton. This will cause the moderately loud occasion to stop all conversation in order to listen to him. A voiceover would then say, When E.F. Hutton talks, when e. F. Hutton people, talks listen. people listen. Folks, I have come to know this. When Olushegun Obasanjo talks, people should listen. You can check this out yourself. Now, Chief Dr. Olushegun Obasanjo, like any human being, does not know everything. But I can tell you that he knows many things. And if it has to do with Nigeria, for which he has the greatest passion and commitment, he knows quite a lot. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari has also accomplished much in his life and for Nigeria. You couldn't become the leader of a country like Nigeria as both a military head of state and as a civilian president without having some seriously distinguishing qualities. I think the two former generals should have a constructive conversation. It will be good for Nigeria. I have gone through the Obasanjo release. To me, it is not a criticism. It is the former president's personal and constructive view. Our constitution permits freedom of speech and expression and by virtue of his inimitable and commanding stature, he most definitely deserves to be heard, especially at a time like this. I believe that given the soldier spirit in President Buhari, he will work even harder in these final 15 months or so of this administration and give his very best to a country I believe he loves. But as Dr. Olashipo has said, he is just one of the real McCoys for 2019, and so all things considered will look to preserve a solid place for himself in history. He knows his capabilities more than anyone else. As Olashupo has also said, and I agree, Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso and Atiku Abubakar appear to be the other top gladiators while not ruling out Sululamidu and many others yet to reveal themselves. And who knows who may seriously rise from the South or the North as well, outside the platforms of the APC and the PDP who have zoned themselves to the North at this time. Nigeria is great. I'm Magnus Paco and that's my view.